Russia's response to the suspected chemical attack in Syria. Meanwhile, the president tweeted that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad will have to pay a big price, and then going as far as blaming Vladimir Putin for supporting the Assad regime. Joining me now is Democratic Congressman Brendan Boyle of Pennsylvania. He is a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, as well as the co-founder of the Free Syria Caucus. Congressman, with a welcome to you, sir. I want to put up your statement okay. that is calling the pictures that you're seeing today sickening. Uh, last week, I know that you co-led a letter with Congressman Steve Stivers of President, to President Trump, rather, urging him to work with our allies to respond to Assad's continuous use of chemical weapons. So. Do you expect any action, and if so, what kind, to follow the president's tweets this morning? Well, thanks for having me on. And as I mentioned um, in my statement, the scenes that we're seeing are sickening. But I want to point out, this is not the first chemical attack to happen. It's not the first this year. This is now the eighth chemical weapons attack to happen. And we know that it is not just possible that they will continue, it is likely that they will continue. When I um, co-wrote that letter to the Trump administration last week, unfortunately the response from the administration was to announce a full withdrawal from Syria. That just creates a total vacuum which can be filled by the Assad regime as well as by Russia and Iran. So I want to see two things. First, I would like to see, frankly, uh, something we've been pushing for some time and that is holding Russia accountable for the actions of Assad uh, in Syria, and that means with real sanctions, number one. And number two, and this might go a little further than some of my colleagues would be comfortable with, we do have to explore militarily the option of at least degrading, if not crippling, Assad's air force. Because it is through his airplanes that he is able to deliver these chemical attacks. If we could take out those planes, we should be able to do so at a relatively little cost and not requiring troops on the ground. Well, you will remember that the president, in his response to what he found uh, morally reprehensible with the chemical attack last year, he did do uh, specific surgical strikes on those places that would launch those weapons. Uh, granted, it, it was, it, it was, it was yeah. too little in terms of the overall big picture, but here we are again a year later. I mean, how likely it is, is it, do you, do you think that your second proposal uh, is even possible? Well, it, it, in, in terms of what President Trump did uh, last time, it was more symbolic than effective. It didn't take out any airplanes. It took out one runway, which was actually fixed and back up uh, to uh, able to be used one week later. So it wasn't very effective at all. It wasn't a real strike. In terms of the ability of the United States as well as other Western allies um, to degrade Assad's uh, air force, this is something that our military has to explore, the way to the pros and cons. But at the very least, the first thing I strongly suggested, which is real sanctions against Russia, that is something that we can and should do. And I do think there's bipartisan support for that on Capitol Hill, of course, we know with President Trump, there has been a lack of willingness there. What about the president, uh, and I want to get your reaction to the tweet that he put out there blaming President Obama, saying that if President Obama had crossed his stated red line in the sand, the Syrian disaster would have ended long ago. Well, you know, it's funny because as people quickly found online, at the time, Donald Trump was tweeting the exact opposite, not to act in Syria do not do anything. He had mm -hmm. something like four or five uh, tweets along those lines. He put of that course, out now in he says something. You're right. Yeah. So now he says something the exact opposite. Uh, so Donald Trump is always going to blame Barack Obama. He seems to have some odd obsession with the former president for the fact that he was a, a popular president and Donald Trump is not. Um, the reality, though, is that when it comes to Syria, in all honesty, the last seven years have been a bipartisan failure in terms of having a policy on Syria. I do think that years from now, we, the American people, will look back on the, um, the disgrace that is the Syrian war and will collectively feel a certain sense of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is 12 million people have been displaced. It's often cited that a half a million have been killed, but do you know the UN has stopped keeping those statistics years mm -hmm. ago? The reality is it's well north of a million people killed. This happened on our watch, and I think it's something that uh, those of us in the West should, real, should feel a real sense 
um, of shame about. Yeah, I think there's a level of, of horror at these numbers and the pictures, and it is a disgrace. You're right. Um, in terms of going forward, timing here, happening in the middle of a significant personnel overturn, uh, turnover rather, in the, in the Trump administration, John Bolton. He starts his job as National Security Advisor tomorrow. Mike Pompeo, he gets his uh, hearing for Secretary of State on Thursday. I know that you have had some concerns about both men, but are you are you encouraged about how they will advise the president in his response to Syria? Uh, not really. I mean, I, I, Bolton uh, is especially um, concerning. He is prone to believing kind of the worst sort of right-wing conspiracy theories, including about our intelligence agencies. Uh, so the fact that some of the more um, stable members of this administration, like McMaster, are leaving and being replaced by someone like Bolton it is more um, cause for concern in, in my view. I'd also just point out the incredible turnover in this administration. It's exactly why more mainstream, re mainstream Republicans are actually cautious and unwilling to join this administration, because the reality is almost every person who works for Donald Trump comes away from the experience diminished. All right. Uh, Democratic Pennsylvania Congressman Brendan Boyle, thank you so much for weighing in. Appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Coming up next in American Dream, we've caught up with the Central American caravan of migrants in Mexico to see.